Hello and, and welcome to Small Group. My name is Eric Metcalf and I'm the campus pastor at the Lincoln Park Old Town Campus of Community Christian Church. A little known fact about us, not only we are the most recent campus of Community Christian Church, we also meet in a historic ballroom once owned by Al Capone. And I'm Brian Warner and I serve as the campus pastor at our Naperville downtown campus. You may not know this, but we're a portable location that meets in Wentz Concert Hall. We are here to welcome you to your small group for this phase of the One Initiative. And we are so excited about what God is getting ready to do right here at Community. And we know that God works through the power and the commitment of people just like you, gathered just like this in life-giving, healthy small groups. You'll find the discussion questions both easy to understand and difficult to wrestle with. So our encouragement to you is to take your time and listen to each other as you are challenged with growing in generosity. Pray for each other as you're working through the booklet. But before we move into the discussion time, we'd like you to hear from someone at Community who has made amazing sacrifices to help people find their way back to God. Hi, my name's Greg Sink, and this is my wife, Debbie. We have four kids, and we've been attending Community for a year and a half. We were living in uh, Frankfort, Illinois, and uh, we're there for about 10 years, and we decided to move out to Shorewood. And my wife was uh, traveling with some of our friends in our neighborhood, and she saw the Yellow Box Church, and uh, she inquired about that. Once I found the location in Shorewood, my husband and I um, decided to check it out. We got back out in the car, and she said, what do you think? And I gave her the standard guy line. I said, well, they were friendly. Uh, I liked the worship music, and I thought the sermon was good. And she goes, are you kidding? Didn't you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit moving in that church? And uh, you know, I was thinking, oh, we'll check it out two or three more times and then we'll kind of weigh in. And she was already sold. She said, this is our church. I just feel so blessed with all the people we've met here. And uh, we have a new small group. We are involved in many different ministries and uh, we are certainly um, reaching out and helping people find God as a result of what we've been blessed with. I started uh, a group called Sowing Seeds. I have a sewing room in my home, and um, so far I have two teenage girls, and I'm teaching them to sew, and they absolutely love it. I'm mentoring them. It's wonderful. They love it, and I get a lot out of it too. When Deb and I talk about the one initiative, and uh, you know, we know that God is number one. As a result of changes in our own, um, we'll say spiritual walk, we run everything past that. Uh, our finances, obviously, we have room to support this, which is a good feeling for us uh, to be able to get behind this initiative. Back in 2010, Deb and I attended a, a seminar called the ABCs of Financial Freedom. We realized that as we were walking with the Lord in all areas of our life, we weren't doing that with our finances. I would classify us as a Sunday wallet giver. Whatever's left over in my wallet, I'd drop in a basket as opposed to being an intentional giver. But when we looked at our current, we'll say lifestyle, it didn't allow for that. The house that we were living in, we knew we needed to sell that. We decided to increase our giving. Uh, right off the bat by making adjustments to our budget and then we would continue to do things to get to that 10% tithe. The first challenge for us was that um, I had lost my job after 28 years. So our initial you know, thinking was, well, well, we'll stop giving to church because we're gonna need the money. But we prayed about it and something else came out of that discussion and we said, we think that we're supposed to increase our giving at this point in time to allow us to rely on God more heavily during that time. And, and that's the commitment that we made. And it did take a good 18 months for me to find another job. Driving a Jaguar at the time, the engine blew, and uh, we needed to figure out how we were gonna replace that. We looked at our budget and our plan and said, Jaguar doesn't fit that. I went to CarMax and I bought a Chevy Cobalt 2010. And uh, I still drive that car today and it's just a gentle reminder every day that I'm on a mission for God. It's God's money. It's not ours. Um, everything we have was because of God. He's going to do so much with it, and we're going to be blessed by it. As I look back at our own personal situation, I was building up walls uh, within me and within our family of allowing God not being able to come in and work in and through us. If anybody's out there and they're thinking about, you know, hey, your story sounds like mine, I'm hanging on too, I'd say, let go and let God. 
because I can guarantee you that when you're a few years down the road, you will look back at that and you will say, wow, God has done a mighty work and I am truly blessed as a result of that. God, God is, is number one, one and, and we, we are, are one on this mission. What an amazing story. It's so good to know that God is blessing the work here at Community. And it's so great to know that your small group will be such a significant part of the next season here. Now it's time to walk through the guide with your group. As you do so, be sure to stay in contact with us through the Community Facebook page or by going to communitychristian.org slash one.